Now, let's get to the accessories menu. You see this little lightning bolt thing and remember how it applied root from one model to the next? Well, this is the exact same thing without there being a button. So, let's go to this car. Hit bone. This car. So right now, it is obsessed with being attached to the root bone of this axis, the ground. So, if we set it to Miku and then we start messing around with what bone it's attached to. Well, let me set it to bone. These are all Miku's bones that it's being attached to. Yeah, top of her head. That that seems good. Let's check mark it. Interpolate, eh, that escapes me because, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to smoothly, like, because interpolation is smoothing, so I'm pretty sure if her head moves, and with that on, then it's just gonna smooth the movement. But that's not what we want. We want it to be attached. We want it to be as if she's holding it. So, top of her head. Yeah. Yeah, that's what interpolation is doing. So, all that extra shaking that the car is doing, I'm pretty sure it's interpolation. Or not. Maybe it's just a really bad bone. Eh, whatever. Anyways, I don't use it. Because I don't know what does. And no ob observable difference. Anyways, this visibility. There's shadow. In case you want the accessory to cast a shadow. And add blend. Again, that's only for things like textures or photoshops. Scale at least has a slider this time. That's nice. And this, even though there's no check mark, you still check mark with this. Accessories only re require one uh, check mark keyframe. So that's nice. Keeps things orderly. Alpha, that is the transparency of it. Now, doesn't that look cool? You can make the invisible jet from Wonder Woman, and you can make it look like that. Invisible plane, not jet. But yeah. Now down here, if you ever move it, these numbers will pop up. Perfect time for them not to pop. There we go. It wasn't selected. Man, it feels like it's attached to a physics jo joint with how badly it's shaking like that. It shouldn't be shaking like that, but whatever. It's fine. I'm pretty sure if I attach this to some other joint... Yep, no more shaking. So it's just whatever the joint I just attached it to. You know. Now, despite my purring cat, hold on. Camera, still gonna be a different tutorial. Let's go to the effects. Let's import something from my, uh, my shader pack. So import effect. See my effects. Look at how many I've downloaded. Jeez. Now everything I use is most likely just been in here. Uh, let's go with the day shader. Honestly, the day shader I was aiming for accuracy. Night, I was aiming for a more arcadey kind of look, something that was stylish. I should probably fix that. A lot of people were like, hey, why doesn't this actually look like nighttime and realistic? So I should probably fix that. Anyways, day shader. As you can see, I have readjusted all of the greener shader settings to be, well, what I wanted them to be. But as you can see, they are not here at the moment. It looks exactly the same. So once some effects, like, let's see here, let's go back a little bit. Some effects like diffusion, just apply themselves immediately. That's gorgeous. While shaders usually require you going into a sign effect, clicking on this middle portion, this arrow right here, and switching to day shader. As you can see, huge difference. Let's start applying this to everything. Even the invisible girl right now. Now a cool thing that a lot of people don't know is this these arrows right here 
I'm pretty sure this is her face. You can set this to be a different shader or no render in case you want to do first person videos. That's creepy. Um, so the importance of setting the face to a different shader is some models like my original Rin video, her face was like a completely different lighting compared to the rest of the video. And I didn't know how to fix it at the time. So that's how you would do that. You would give her a different shader. And cool thing about importing uh, this kind of stuff is that you can just keep on re-importing them and give them slightly different settings. So let's see, let's assign her face the second shader. I believe this is the second one. And let's change something, let's change this. So in case the face is kind of off like this compared to the rest of the body, that is how you would fix that. And here, in case you have a whole bunch of effects that are causing trouble, you can turn them off right here without adjusting their keyframes or anything like that. Although this doesn't affect shaders, sadly. Let's get rid of this second one. Now, as you can see, the root bone selection thing is still here. Now, what could this possibly be useful for, since it's usually for models attaching to things? Now, power depth of field, let me show you how this works. And now, let me... Yeah, you see the FPS drop? This thing is beast, powerful. Let me set the scale up to be insanely high. Now, as you can see, everything around is blurry, and the focus is obviously in the ground right here because if we set no nah, never mind a show marker it's set to right here for the ground but if we grab that root bone move it around actually the side would be yeah we're moving the uh yeah watch this bed right here watch the blurriness of it or actually move this back there we go. So this is the root bone of the power depth of field effect. And this is where it's focusing on. Now, you don't want to constantly readjust this. So the best thing, and what I usually do, is apply it to Miku. And then set it to wherever the hell I want it to. Usually the waist is pretty good Or some other things if you want to get you know super close God damn that is gorgeous look at that background But yes power depth of field is a powerful effect which is why when I go to an assign effect I usually turn it off Turn off effects until uh, I'm finished with an animation so that I can save the frames. Another useful thing, because this, the shaders don't turn off that way, if you just disable all effects, then everything's disabled, and you have your frame rate back. De debug effect, I never touch it. Sound? Come on, who, who, who wants sound in their videos, right? This is not like you'll have a ton of people in your comments section going, where is sound? Anyways, let's get back on topic. Again, a movement menu. Now this, this is just the sub files that you can select, uh, depending on, like, like, different effects have different presets, and this is where those presets are. But Power Depth of Field only has one preset for me to select. Yeah, this is an FX sub preset so that's all it is not much change because it's you know doing the exact same thing it was doing beforehand 
and that's mostly it with effects. Let's just keep on important stuff. Yeah, earthquake. Here we go. Now some effects they scale based on scale instead of alpha. Because power depth of field, yes. If we set that, yeah, that's set by scale. With the blurriness, some things use alpha. I've barely crossed stuff that use alpha, but earthquake. Jeez, let's set that to zero. That's nice. In fact, let's just select everything and register those keyframes because this is nice. So the way you would usually do a step with an earthquake, oh my god, what the hell, is you would set this to like 0 0.5 or something like that. Make sure it's selected. And then you would let the rever reverberation go away back down into zero. And make sure to have a starting point too. Like this, you want one frame before it hits to be zero. So when you go along, it's going to do a step and then it reverberates off. That's how you usually do earthquakes or steps or anything like that. It's a very useful tool for making things feel like they vibrate. or have an impact.